Hello everyone, this is Vikram Prakash and you are listening to Architecture Talk. We are picking up our pace here, bringing you more and more conversations that advance the frontier of architectural thinking. And that is certainly the case with my conversation today and I mean that with Junichi Saito. Junichi Seto is new faculty member here in the Department of Architecture at the University of Washington, but he has a distinguished and unbelievably diverse career and a fantastic story about how he came back to be teaching over here uh, our beginning introductions to design, which he has a really broad and interesting take on moving it as into an alternative for traditional architectural design thinking into something which we agreed was more better characterized as simply architectural thinking. The diverse possibilities of uh, using architectural thinking in constructive ways is the topic of our conversation organized around an itinerary through his amazing and diverse life. I hope you enjoy it as usual. If you have suggestions, comments, please do write to me at vikram.prakash, V-I-K-R-A-M dot Prakash, P as in Peter, R-A-K-A-S-H at gmail.com. Look forward to this conversation. Architecture is really the art and science of turning fiction into fact. Sometimes uh, kind of real architectural life interferes with intellectual architectural life. There is no such thing as <coughs> architecture. All right, All right, Junichi Seto, welcome to Architecture Talk. Thank you, thank you. Such a delight to have this conversation with you. I have only just come to know you. You are new faculty here in the Department of Architecture at the University of Washington. We have stolen you up from the University of Oregon in Eugene. Yep. And we spent some time talking last week and I was so fascinated and so impressed by your life and career and all the things that you've done and in particular for your vision for uh, what we agreed was architectural thinking yep. that I thought I had to bring a conversation with you to to my listeners here on Architecture Talk. Mm. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yes. So Junichi, start us off by telling us what is it that you have been brought in to teach over here, but really how you are transforming it. You know, I want you to first set up this notion of uh, architectural thinking for us. So I guess I need to go back a little bit in time and explain to you how I became who I am. Okay, right? tell yeah. us, yeah. So growing up in Japan in the 70s and 80s yeah. was not easy, yeah. um, especially when you were trying to figure things out. Yeah. If you are passive and try to fit into the system, it's yeah. no problem. The system is great. Everybody yeah. was, their life was getting better yeah. after the war. Yeah. yeah, 70s and 80s was a boom time for Japan. Japan, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but watching my father uh, yeah. commute two hours in the packed train, yeah, both ways. Yeah, um, to me that wasn't the future that I wanted to live in. Yeah, so, so you ran away from home. Yeah, right, after making all this noise and destroyed a lot of things. Yeah, uh, object and relationship and a lot of things. Um, I escaped and came to America to be a rock star. Yes. Yeah. You so, landed in Seattle. Right. So, the, because the, the, you know, Kurt Cobain was starting to become popular. So, you wanted to be the Jap Japan Kurt Cobain? Right. And I think what I liked about him was he was breaking all the rules. Yes. Right? He was changing the music scene. He was changing the business of music. Yeah. And he was very vocal about it. Um, What's your favorite Nirvana song? Uh, that's a hard question. It smells like Teen Spirit. Of course, it smells <laughs> like Teen Spirit. But, um, <laughs> so, so, um, so you were what? You were sitting around with a guitar on the sidewalks so, yeah. of Seattle and Pike Street? Or yeah. where were you? Pike Place Market. Pike um, Place Market? Yeah. You were singing in Pike Place Market? Yeah. Well, not singing. I'm not a good singer. So I was just playing guitar. You were playing um, guitar. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I was, you know, surviving. Um, yeah. Trying to find a way to be next to Kurt Cobain. Yeah. But I did that for a few years. Yeah. And someone came to me. Yeah. And said, 
you're not going to make it. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to have honest critics, right. no? Uh, he said, oh, one, yeah. you don't look so good. <laughs> you don't look so good? Because you're a rock star, you gotta have, you have to have the attitude. You oh, you didn't have, have long hair and all that? I did have a long hair, okay. but I didn't have a long leg. So. <laughs> and uh, I didn't have the look. Yeah. And also, I wasn't angry. Um, oh. yeah, that was a good thing for him to tell me. He yeah. said, you know, you kind of have to be angry about something. Yeah. You know, if you want to make a noise. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I asked myself, what am I angry about? I, I, That's such great advice. If yeah. you're not angry about something, you're probably not, uh, yeah, not gonna make passionate it about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then uh, he said, well, if you want to get serious about life, come see me. And he turned out to be an art instructor yeah. at Edmund Community College. I see. So I went up, and yeah. he started teaching me everything he knew, yeah. um, from photography to... Uh, he, was, he actually was a sculptor, graduated from UW uh, oh. in art department. Yes. And so he taught me everything from painting to drawing to uh, sculpture. And, and that's when I fell in love with art. I, I probably spent the next six months in the studio, 24-7, making. Making things. Yeah, painting, making, uh, welding, carving. You don't do things in half measures. No. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but it was such an experience that I had never felt. And also, I think that's what I was looking for. Yeah. Something that I can just devote myself to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that I became obsessed and addicted to that feeling. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. So that's my foundation of my living. Okay, so then you became an artist? And, yeah. Uh, and then I, with his suggestion, I went to uh, Rhode Island School of Design. RISD. Yeah. You got into a really RISD. fine school. Yeah. Um, okay. And uh, I think that changed a lot also. When I got there, you know, coming from this sort of a lower middle class Japanese family, yeah. uh, coming to America as a teenager, yeah. having no experience in not much of anything, yeah. um, going to RISD and surrounded with these kids who had already been studying art and design for the last 12 years in schools. Okay. Traveling to Europe and did you Did you feel intimidated? Oh, I felt lost. I didn't know what they were talking about most of the time. Um, I didn't even know how to use fork and knife at yeah. the dinner table. So yeah. I, I felt barbaric in a way. Yeah. But I learned quickly and those kids at RISD are great. And they taught me a lot of things I didn't know. Yeah. So I, I think that being at RISD sort of opened my eyes to a different world yeah. that I didn't even know existed. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, high, it was finer living, uh, so to speak. Finer living? Yeah, because the, the students would go off to vacation in Europe for the summer, which I had not even dreamt of. Yeah, like it wasn't I see, so, so Did you feel, so you were exposed to the art world, but also the hierarchies in the art world? That too, but I didn't see it that way. Um, you saw it as how? I saw it as uh, this beautiful things that I have not seen that uh, actually exist. I see. And I didn't feel jealous or threatened by it, but rather I was curious. Yeah. And some of my friends sort of took me under their wing yeah. and took me to their family home. And yeah, yeah, yeah. So I started to learn how that part of living they, was. They adopted you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I see. And then when I graduated, the first job I got, the real job I got, was at Dean De Luca in New York. Yeah. And Dean and De Luca, you mean the Italian grocery store? Right. Well, oh. the international grocery store. They started out with an Italian grocery, but they expanded to international food. And Mr. Dean and DeLuca and their third partner, Jack Shiglick, who was a painter, yeah. really adapted me as their son. And yeah. None of them had children. So I became sort of their child. And uh, they took me all over the place, vacation, dinner, parties. Really? Yeah. Why? It, it, Why did they adopt you? I think they, they saw this little Japanese kid thirsty for knowledge and skills and experience. And they just fed me. I don't know. It, it, was, it was a beautiful moment. They sort of transmitting their knowledge and experience to me. I'm using that to help their business and their lives. Okay. But what I learned there was, it's not really about anything, but art of living. Um, art of living. Yeah. So they weren't a businessman. They didn't get into this to start a business. They oh. got into this because they loved food. Yeah. And they loved everything about food. Yeah. From cooking to eating to whatever. Right. And they, they loved every aspect of food. Right. And uh, so uh, they also said explicitly that it's really not about money. It's really not about career. It's really not about security. It's really about living. Yeah. 
right? And none of them came from a wealthy family. They really made it themselves. Okay. And uh, Mr. Dean always said, you have to understand from pits to the palace, right? Meaning, you have to understand the life from the bottom to the top. Yeah. Right? And that, then you can begin to appreciate life. And I see. start to talk about art. So, yeah. you know, when they travel, they don't just go to a high end resort. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They go to the ghettoest of the places and they find the best food there. Yeah. So they were really living. Um, they were so what were you doing for them? What was your job? So I did everything they needed, what they needed as a designer. So I designed their stores, cafes, packaging. Uh -huh. I also worked behind the counters. I um, see. When they needed a hands, yeah. the kitchen. Yeah. Um, everywhere. Indian so this Italian international store working with, so would you des describe your design style at Dean and DeLuca as just your basic modernist RISD kind of design style or would you say Japanese influenced or what was it? Or it was just you were just doing what they are they roughly had, outlined for you? They actually got rid of all the preconceived notion of design that yeah. I came with yeah. from RISD. Yeah. They actually told me to forget whatever you learned. Okay. Like, yeah, this is a whole new thing. Learn as though you don't know anything. I see. So I did. And they said, we are in food business. Yeah. Right? So understand how food should be looked at, how yeah. food should be tasted, yeah. how food should be treated, yeah. and design from that. Yeah. Right? It sort of reminds me of Callison's story, you know, huh. Jim Callison, who started Callison Architecture. Uh -huh. He also did Nordstrom. Uh, you know, that's how he grew up. That's how that firm became big. Right. But anyway, that's a different story. Go on. Yeah. So I think what I learned there was, you know, focus on what actually is the most important thing. Mm. It's not about building. It's mm. not about materials that you package food with, but it's the food itself. I see. So understand the food. Yeah. And then start thinking from there. And everything has to so, be... So you made the food into architecture? Architecture for the food. Right, so that the, the so space. What is that, architecture for the food? So the space that people give me an can, example. The dining table, right? Yeah. So it's not about material of yeah. the, the table or shape of the table, but where the food sit and how you and I sit in relation to the food. Yeah. And how do we make it so that it becomes an art of eating? Right. So so so. so I think it's that so ergonomics. Of no, food. I think it's the relationship. Yeah. With seeking the better relationship between you and I, yeah, you to the food, I to the food, yeah, and I we to this environment we find so, ourselves. So, so tell me the secret. What makes for a better relationship? I don't think we can define it, and I think it's different for every situation. So, if you go to a dinner party at Mr. Dean's house, it'll be different every time. The oh. the setting will be different. The way we sit will be different. Yeah. Because the food he's serving is different, and the people who are coming is different. So he would really consider each guest. So every to... meal, every dinner party is a design project. Exactly. And not only the dinner party, to the party is also a part of this whole experience. To the party? What do you mean? So he would specify a certain time yeah. and for people to show up. And yeah. depending on the time of the day, yeah. he would set up a candlelight way before you get to his house. Oh. It's almost like a tea ceremony, in Japanese tea yeah, ceremony. Yeah, it's like a Japanese tea ceremony. Yeah, so everything is considered for the enjoyment of the moment. Uh, not for anything else, but for that moment. So and you're saying his dinner parties were like a Japanese tea, tea ceremony. ceremony? Yeah, to appreciate each other in that moment. That and was, was the ritual involved also in his dinners? Without us knowing, he, he would hire culture for his dinner party. So yeah. someone would take your coat yeah. um, and put it away so you don't have to worry about it. Yeah, um, yeah coat check is kind of a ritual. Yeah. 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 And then he would have a, a server, yeah. but not formal server. Yeah. Like a, he would hire someone from the end of the store for a, a night. Yeah. And they would be just around to take care of the guest, whatever they need. And they would make sure that the guests have wines and the water. And I see. We wouldn't even know it that these guys were hired I to do that. So I think that's when I started to think differently about my role in this world. I'm not making a mark or I'm not making anything really. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm trying to make that like the better relationship between the humans and us to the world. Right.
Right. Whatever that might be. Okay. Got it. Yeah. But so that, you were, how long did you work with Dean and DeLuga? Over a decade. Um, a decade? Yeah, because yeah. uh, they sold business yeah. um, to a company from uh, California, but we stayed on as a consultant. Yeah. That's when I, Mr. Dean, and then Jack started a company together in New York. Called? And, uh, Shigrik, Dean, and Sato. So oh. three of our names. What we did was the D and the Rico was our client, yeah. um, but also we started to design houses and kitchens and the food products for other people. Uh, so yeah. you were designing houses to consume food well, right? So all of our design would start from the kitchen. Yeah, like yeah. Where do we put the kitchen? Yeah, yeah. And then where do we eat? And and then the rest comes. And that's when I started teaching as well. And I think my teaching changed because I started working with them. You started teaching where? Uh, RISD. Um, oh, you went back to RISD yeah. to teach. Yeah, okay. I didn't study architecture first. At RISD. I studied graphic design. And when, I, when we started designing houses, I hadn't studied architecture yet. Okay. Uh, yeah. So you were designing uh, houses, doing right. architecture without architecture degree. Right. Or spaces. Or were you stores. good at it? I think so. I mean, we got published all over the place. Okay. Um, and we did get published. And that's when I realized that I probably needed to know more about architecture. I, I was asked a few questions by these journalists, but I, um, I didn't even know what the question was about. Uh, <laughs> they, they would use more like tectonics. And, tectonics. And I had no idea what they were talking about. Yeah. So I, I decided to go back to school. Um, okay. So I did. And when I graduated, they uh, offered me teaching position. And I started teaching. Oh, so you went back to RISD? Yeah, for MR. You know, MR, yeah. you did a professional master's. Right, right. And immediately RISD offered you a teaching job. Yeah, I was much older and uh, they needed to fill some spot. Some spot, yeah. yeah. Okay. And, yeah. and I had been TAing for a lot of faculties. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So, okay. Um, so All right. I started teaching. Um, so I was commuting from New York to yeah. Providence for a while. I think New York to Providence, that's quite a way. <laughs> Three and a half hours commute. What? Yeah. That's um, not a commute. Okay, anyway. That was great. Um, but that's when I started to wonder about what we are teaching to the students. So, you know, a lot of design teaching is about design, yeah. right? So we talk about design principle, talk about how. And then uh, amongst the teachers, we talk about how to teach those, how to design. Yeah. Um, so it's all about how, how, how. Yeah. At the end of Luca, so whenever I go back to New York, the how was never important. The what was more important or why. Yeah, right. why? Um, why? Why? Yeah. yeah, why rather than how? Yeah. Um, so the question rather than the methodology. Right, right, right. So the methodology really didn't matter. Mister didn't really didn't care mm. if I had a perspective drawing yeah. of the store. He... Why don't you tell Nab this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think that's how I'm trying to get my students to think. Yeah. And I had a student at RISD, this, this student, the project was to design a library. Uh -huh. um, and we gave them a site. Yeah. Right? And it's a typical project. Yeah. And this student came over to me after three weeks, yeah. you know, after everybody's doing a site analysis, right. and, you know, precedent. Yeah. She came to me yeah. and said, Junichi, I, 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 don't, I don't think it's a good idea. <laughs> no, what's not a good idea? Uh -huh. The library. Uh -huh. the, we shouldn't build a library there. Oh. And like, that was the best solution. Exactly. <laughs> and, but it didn't dawn on me yeah. that, wow, this student is actually asking the right question. Yeah. Like, it's not about how to design this library, but she's saying, why? Why? And that also changed the way I think about teaching. So I think I've been, I've been trying to get a little prescribed way of teaching architecture or anything for that matter. Try to encourage students to go out and ask for themselves why. So you started teaching at RISD and then where did you go? Then uh, I quit everything. You were just disgusted with teaching. You thought... No, 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 no. Teaching was great, yeah. but my business was thriving in yeah. New York, yeah. but I think I got burnt out. Uh, too much. Too much of too much. Commuting three and a half hours. <laughs> Anybody will get burnt out. Yeah. <laughs> So I quit everything. Yeah. I quit my design studio. Yeah. I shut it all down yeah. and became a farmer. I apprenticed to a farmer upstate yeah. New York. I felt like I needed to find my connection. Back to the earth. Earth, yeah. Was your dad a farmer? No, uh, he was a typical Japanese businessman. Japanese businessman. Yeah. So you became a farmer. Yeah. 
You're crazy, Junichi. <laughs> I didn't think about that, though. It made sense to me. I think I How did it make sense? I was reading a lot of things by Wendell Berry and also Bernard Rudofsky and oh. all these old thinkers. Oh, architecture without architecture? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, all these wise men was telling me we probably need to find a better way of living, different way of living, mm -hmm. if we are to solve. So you read Henry David Thoreau also? Yes, yes, yes. All those people, right? So you went and became a farmer. Farmer. And oh, my God. Yes, okay. Because that's the foundation of living, right? Yes. Like a food. Food, yeah. food. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right? You wanted to grow food. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, I, I, I learned a lot about food at the end of guy, and I wanted to know where it comes from and yeah. how to make the whole system better. Yeah. So I did that for a while, and then uh, my master farmer decided yeah. to retire. Yeah. So I needed to find another place to go. Yeah. And uh, with his suggestion, I moved to uh, South Carolina to farm because the land is cheaper. And so how many years did you farm? Um, total six, seven years. Seven years yeah. you farmed. Yeah. What did you learn um, about life? That's a good question. A lot of things. The happiness doesn't come from out there. Happiness comes from within. You're right. The Buddha told you that 2,000 years ago. Right, right, right. But I think we don't quite understand that until we experience certain things. How did farming teach you that? Because, you know, when you're farming, you really don't have much time to go shopping or, or go to museum or go do these things or go movies for that matter. So you begin to appreciate little things, and you begin to learn to appreciate little things. But they're not little things, like, you know, this seed turning into a food. Seed turning into food is magic. Ma it, it, absolutely. Yeah. But there's no better story than that, right? There is no better story than that. So living on a farm became a magical experience. So you had six years of magical living. Yeah. How did that teach you that happiness comes from within? Because I was happy. So, okay. Without having in, any external stimulation oh, or recognition. You were looking at seeds and looking at tomatoes. What were you growing? Japanese vegetables. Um, Japanese vegetables in South Carolina. <laughs> Are you crazy? <laughs> I wish you had told me that. I, that was a bad idea. Because no one would buy it. No one would buy it? No. <laughs> I wish you, would have, you had told me that before. Uh, yeah, but no one would buy it. That's when I quit. I had to quit. And start making a living. Yeah. Because, you know, I had no money. So that's when I started teaching again. I went to Crimson and they offered me a position there. Yeah. I, I, teaching uh, what? Architecture. Um, architecture. Yeah. And they were looking for someone to teach the M Mark 1. Yeah. Um, and track students. Yeah, I basically begged them to give me a position because I, I really needed Because you were broke. Yeah. Okay. And they, uh, they gave me a position. It was great. They had a new director there yeah. and there were a lot of young faculty there. And there was this energy. There. How many years did you teach at Clemson? Three years. And what did you learn there? Were you successful? Yeah, I loved it. I loved it. I had a great colleagues, a great relationship with the students. So um, why did you leave? My father got sick. My um, father got sick. Yeah. I, I hadn't seen him. I didn't really know the guy. I, 30 years. 30 I had, years? I hadn't, you hadn't met your father? I saw him a few times. And for sure, how often time. did you go to Japan all these years? Every three years or so. Three uh, years or yeah. so. Yeah. Uh, but not to see my parents, uh, just to see my friends. And you didn't see your parents? I saw them for a short amount of time. Just say hi and tell them that I'm alive. Uh, yeah. I, did, I really didn't have a good relationship with them. Wow. Yeah. But then you gave everything up to go and be with your father. Well, prodigal son. We didn't know that he was going to live that long. And they told me he was going to die. Yeah. So I decided to take a couple of weeks off, mm -hmm. go to the funeral, yeah. and come back yeah. teaching. Yeah. And what happened was my dad, when, as soon as I showed up, mm -hmm. he, and he looked at his doctor and said, my, my oldest son has come home, yeah. so I can die now. Take me home. Yeah. Right, no more treatment, no more medicine. Yeah, yeah. So we took him home. Yeah. He got better. <laughs> 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 it, it, it was amazing. After two weeks, we knew there was something wrong here. Like, his color's coming back, he's eating again, and after a month, he's walking. So I said to the doctor, is he really dying? Because I kind of got to get back to yeah. work. Yeah. And he said, yeah, any minute now. And it happens when these patients go off the, the treatment. Yeah. Their body bounces back for a while, but it crashes quickly. 
Yeah. A long story short, he lived three years. <laughs> <laughs> so after you know six months, uh, we called Clemson, and my wife was there with me. Yeah. And we called Clemson. We we're, we're gonna say uh, this must be some sign that we should spend his last moment with him here. Eldest son, how many brothers are you? I have a younger brother. Two, bro uh, two, two brothers. Yeah. Two brothers. Any yeah. sisters? No. Okay. Just two. Just the two yeah. of you. What does your younger brother do? He uh, he he was trained as a chef. He went to Italy, learned to cook. He's food too. Yeah. yeah. And Italian too. He's just following your <laughs> footsteps. You set him up? No, 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 no. He did it on his own. Uh, because his elder brother was doing all this. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. But then he came back to Japan. So he's a good Italian chef. He is. He Are is. you a good cook? I, I think I'm better than him. <laughs> <laughs> Italian or Japanese? I don't... I, I, everything. Um, everything. Well, I, I just pick an oh ingredient and put God. it together. Like, I don't have a, a particular thing. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. So we have to cook together. That'd be fun. Yeah. Uh, you, you like to cook? I like to cook. Yeah. I'm not a great cook. Yeah. But, uh, we should just go to market. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Pick things up. Pick things yeah. up and see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's how I cook. Yes. Yeah. I, me too. Yeah. Yes. Oh, great. Yeah. Let's do yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So maybe we'll have a dinner and, and you and I will cook for our new faculty cohort or something. Oh, that would be fun. Yeah. That would be fun. I have a fun kitchen. You do? Yeah. All right. That's really fun kitchen. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Yeah, I would love to do that. Okay, so the old man started to get better. Yeah. And then and, uh, what did you do? Well, so, you know, again, we started to run out of money. Yeah. Um, so we <laughs> looked around and maybe we should open a store. Oh. Because uh, we had sort of partnership with yeah. this uh, friends yeah. in New York yeah. who are making clothes yeah. and bags. Yeah. And we decided to join together yeah. and, and open a store in Tokyo. So we would design clothes, yeah. make in New York, yeah. and set, sell them in my store. Wait, 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 wait. You were designing food interiors, then you were doing agriculture, and now suddenly you're designing clothes. I make a lot of things. I'm one of those people who like to make things. So you can make anything? You can too. I mean, we have YouTube today. <laughs> Shows everything. No, um, no. So, so. I, I think it's just a matter of giving yourself time to learn those things. You okay. Sit down and do it, right? So you sat down, you taught yourself how to sew? Yeah. Did this waistcoat, you're wearing a wonderful, beautiful waistcoat? Yeah. Did you sew this yourself? Yeah. You sewed it yourself? Yeah. And this is a sample. Oh, this is your sample? Yeah. So, I need one of those. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so so we started to do that. Yeah. But then, uh, you know, having a store is fun for a while, but it gets old quick. Yeah. So we, I started to grab this unsuspecting customer yeah. to the back room and say, hey, let's have some tea together. Uh -huh. And we would sit and have tea and we'd talk yeah. and find out about who they are and where they come from. And pretty soon my wife and I realized that these Japanese people are miserable. Yeah. They're depressed, they're stressed, yeah, they're yeah. overworked. Yeah. The husband and wife not talking to each other. Yeah. So we started to uh, make an event for these people to be happy. So you made a happiness shop. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the happiness store. Instead of the body shop, you should have the happiness, happiness shop. shop. <laughs> So then I would find out that that guy knows how to make uh, ceramics. So yeah. I would have him come and teach people at the store how to make it. Yeah. And we would make it and sell them at our store. Yeah. And, and then, you know, someone knows how to write a poetry. So we yeah. have a poetry workshop. Yeah. And stuff like that. So, what? Really? Yeah, so our store sort of became a, every time you go in there, something else is happening. What was of. the store called? Utility Works. Utility it Works. works. Um, it's still there. Still there. Yeah. So we, we In Tokyo. Yep. Yeah. We run it for about three years. Yeah. And then, um, great, the, the, the community grew. So every Friday we would have hung anywhere from 150 to 300 people in this 500 square feet store, spilling out to the street, drinking. How many people? 150? Yeah. It, it, every Friday? Yeah. So we would have a film showing. Like we would make a film during yeah. the week yeah. with our neighbors yeah. and show it. Yeah. And then all these people come and critique it after. Yeah. Through the night, yeah. drinking, eating, yeah. and serious discourse about yeah. filmmaking. Yeah. Oh. But none of these people are film critics or yeah. had ever made films. Yeah. But I would instigate these questions. Like, yeah. So how was acting? Yeah. Right? And then 
someone said, oh, that was great. Yeah. And I would say, really, though? Like, yeah. Like, that, you call that great acting? Yeah. <laughs> and then we started having a real discussion. But, yeah. um, and then we would make a theater. Yeah. Uh, live sitcom, weekly sitcom. So you're doing theater? Yeah. Film you know, criticism? Yeah. Art school? Art, ceramics, yeah. clothes, I'm sure food. Yeah. And some people said to quit their day job yeah. because they found something else they're passionate about. Ah. Like one guy became a photographer, the other guy became a writer, the yeah. other guy became a chef. Yeah. Someone opened a cafe because yeah. of the experience. Yeah. So we realized there's something going on there. Yeah. And at this point, it wasn't ours anymore. The community was running it. Yeah. We would suggest something, but they would say, oh, no, that's a bad idea. Let's do this instead. Oh. Like, great. Right? Oh. So after three years, my immigration status in the U.S. started to get a little iffy. Oh. Because I have a green card. You have a green card. Yeah. So um, I was going back and forth between, yeah. but you know, it gets expensive. Yeah. So my wife said, well, maybe it's time to hand over this business to yeah. the community yeah. and go back to the States and see what else we can do. Okay. Um, so the store is now run by the community. They're, they're running no, it. No, really? Yeah, yeah they're, they're keeping okay, it going. Okay, you got to go do a field visit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the funny thing is, it's a lot more organized. <laughs> <laughs> you were chaotic. No, yeah, I was, I was. Uh, they have a calendar of events <laughs> and they know exactly what's happening. Uh-huh. It's thriving. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. So I came back, and I think at this point, I, I'm not even calling myself you know, the, the teacher of architecture. Yeah. I'm just instigator of fun. Yeah, yeah. Instigator of fun. <laughs> <laughs> so instigator of fun. Point. Salman Rushdie could write a novel about that. Because <laughs> there's so many people are not having fun. Yeah. And uh, it's not that... Um, it's, so it, you have the happiness shop, and yeah. its mission is instigating fun, fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah but you leave it all for a green card right right well on the hindsight that probably wasn't a, such a good idea it would probably should have stayed you should have yeah made it into something else but, okay but at that time mm. my wife and i felt that it's time okay uh, my my father had passed away yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, we stayed long enough to take care of my mother and uh-huh. make sure that she was okay yeah. by herself. So we came back. There was, the new job opened up in San Diego. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, so we decided that that's a good timing. So okay. we, we moved to San Diego where we had never been. Yeah. yeah. Like, uh, always sunny, supposedly. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. San Diego. Always sunny. <laughs> nice temperature. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, little did we know that that would drive anybody crazy. Like, sunny that day every day. S- sunny day every day drove you crazy? Uh-huh. You're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, I'm glad you're in Seattle because yeah. we have a lot of great days. Yes, and we love it. But uh, yeah, San Diego is an interesting place. What year did you move back to San Diego? Uh, 2018. 18. 18. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then what happened in San Diego? So we continued doing similar things. Um, we got involved. You opened a happiness store in San Diego? No, but we joined with a local organization that was sort of doing a similar thing. There's a place called Asia Project. And they what spell it? A J A. Okay. Project. Aja. It's okay. it's an acronym. Okay. In Spanish, it's basically helping people to be independent. Okay. So what we do there is to uh, gather the students from underserved community, yeah. um, immigrants, yeah. um, migrants, yeah, and teach them things around photography, storytelling. I see. So we will teach kids how to make the stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And tell it. Yeah. So some kids would perform it, some yeah. kids would make film, yeah. um, write. Yeah. And so, we so you teach them how to tell stories. Right, right. Okay, so I'm starting to get this. So you learned that the important question is why, not how. And then you decide that the real question is happiness and fun. And then you decide that the best thing about this is to learn to tell stories. Wow. That's an amazing summary. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm making yeah, the curriculum for yeah, the architecture thinking, thinking, thinking curriculum. You're but, right. Yeah. yeah, I think you're right. I think that I think I'm distilling yeah, yeah, yeah. life into something that I guess I'm looking for the core yeah, yeah, yeah. of what we are about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or the curriculum. I like right. core or curriculum. Okay. So you teach storytelling. Yeah. Um, okay. So we do that. And then um, my wife got involved with this organization called ARTS. Mm-hmm. And it's an acronym for A Reason to Survive. 
Uh-huh, uh-huh. So they're also a similar organization. They, a but reason to survive. survive. Amazing title. Yeah. So that's what art is. A reason to, to survive. survive. Oh my God! I yeah. hope there is somebody in the digital universe listening to this podcast because they can finally understand the value of art. Art. It's the reason to, to survive. survive. <laughs> and, and they have an amazing history. As a man started this organization to really give a reason for children in this poor neighborhood, yeah. a dangerous neighborhood, yeah. and the kids who had no hope for the future. Yeah. Uh, this guy decided to give them a hope yeah. through art. Yeah. And it's an amazing organization. My wife joined. And this is all like that guy who picked you up from Pike Place Market yeah. and gave you a reason to survive. survive. I, yeah, yeah. So you're just doing the same thing. Yeah, that, I'm now giving back. You're doing yeah. the, what he did for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that actually I am conscious of. I'm trying to give back. And uh, oh, Give back means nothing. <laughs> Everybody claims to be giving back. <laughs> You're doing a lot more than giving <laughs> back. You know, just because you give something, you fund a charity, that's nothing mm. compared to what you're doing. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. No, this is way more than giving back. So you did this for a while. Yeah. And, uh, but something was a, was a difficult place for us. It was difficult. Yeah. Uh, my wife's from the South, and I'm from Japan, New York. The South, you mean? What yeah. You mean? I, my wife's from Georgia. Georgia? Yeah. She's a Southern girl. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, and the culture didn't really make sense to us. California is too crazy for her. It, yeah, it's very. I don't want to be too negative about California because there's a lot of great thing about California. Uh, for one, we were talking about sustainability, but you know, being in Southern California itself is not sustainable. Why not? Uh, you have to steal water from everywhere just to have. A... Live on very little water. You can do be sustainable there. But not in that scale. There's yeah. so many people there. Yeah. There's so much industry that yeah. wastes so much water. Yeah. You're talking about almonds. You're talking about all yeah, the farming. Yeah, right. Almonds. Yeah. And it doesn't feel like they're going in the no direction of sustainability. They talk about sustainability a lot. Yeah. But, I mean, the perfect example of what Bernard Rudofsky said, we don't need new technology. Yeah. We need a new way of living. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So we felt kind of funny yeah. teaching in that, that environment. Yeah, Because yeah, yeah. whatever we are saying, we're just saying it. Just for saying it. Right. Yeah, yeah. So it makes you feel good, but it doesn't actually do anything. Right, right. So we decided... So you felt hypocritical. Yeah, okay. somewhat. Somewhat. And so you decided to leave California. We started looking. Yeah. And then the University of Oregon offered me this fellowship uh-huh. um, to talk about uh, diversity and equity in design. Diversity and equity in design. Yeah. yeah, so it's a special justice fellowship. This is like a separate track. You were going on a fun and happiness track. Now suddenly you're on a diversity, <laughs> equity, and sustainability track. Oh what my happened? God. <laughs> you are seeing right through me. Yeah. That's so scary. Yeah. Oh man. Um, and you're the first one to catch that. I, mean, I knew it. Yeah. But nobody else. Ever said anything. It's obvious. You the... <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? So I think it was a kind of excuse uh, to get out of California. Oh, you're just using it as an excuse. Yeah, because uh, if you look at my... I don't blame you. California, yeah. anybody. Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> uh, if you look nobody. at in my past, that could be construed as the social justice Right, like I, I'm helping people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but that wasn't my point. Yeah. But I sort of constructed this narrative. Packaged it. You're right. You told a story. Yeah. <laughs> you were teaching storytelling, so yeah. you made up a story yeah. that fits the you know, this West Coast uh, values yeah. that we all have over here. You know, we, this is what we want to buy here yeah. in the West Coast, right? But so what happened though was that I, so I joined the, the fellowship yeah. and I met a few people there. Yeah. Robert Clark from Brooklyn. Yeah. Um, uh, Sammy Chohan from Pakistan. Mm-hmm. I uh, know Sammy. I met right, Sammy. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. So three of us would get together once in a while and discuss. Yeah. And none of us were really happy there yeah. after a while. Yeah. And for multiple reasons. But the biggest reason was this notion of spatial justice. Yeah. Right. Shortly after, we realized that the, the conversation is really not about anything, but like you said, it's a marketing tactic. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It sounds like something we should be talking about. Yeah. So I learned a lot about what 
what's going on. Yeah. And I, you know, I tell people now, this is the first time in 35 years of being in America yeah. that I feel like I'm a minority. Because I had never been conscious yeah. of my race yes. until this moment. This, this last two years, all of a sudden everybody told me yeah, you're that right I'm now. a Japanese, I'm an Asian. Yes. Right? You know, I so completely experienced the same thing. Yeah. Now, this is not to undermine other people's experiences who feel marginalized all the time, but I also suddenly started to feel like a colored person in the last few years. Right, right. It's a strange phenomenon to me. It is a strange phenomenon. Yeah. So three of us used to get, get together and we talk about what really needs to happen. Uh-huh. Uh, and uh, my feeling was that it's really not about us coming up with a solution yeah. to this equity, diversity problems. Yeah. But it's probably the people in the majority yeah. that needs to go out and understand and try to fix whatever they're doing. Yeah. But they, instead, they're putting the pressure on us yeah. to come up with a solution, which I don't think is the right thing to do. Yeah, that's a very interesting viewpoint because we have this kind of sense that Somehow we got to have minority people at the table and they will tell us what is the right thing to do. Right. Really what we are looking for in many cases is, you know, for them to bless the process that we are right. engaged with. Right. Right? Right. Right. It's a very strange thing. Yeah. So I went to University of Oregon not really knowing yeah. about any of that, yeah. but I did learn a lot about the issues that we are facing. Mm-hmm. And you started to run a salon in the bar. Right. So that, that, was, that was sort of a, came out of a frustration. Yeah. And someone had listened to your architecture talk. Oh, it's my fault? <laughs> <laughs> now you're blaming me? <laughs> <laughs> so it's, um, no, I'm not blaming you. But it was great because uh, someone heard the, the talk and uh, we started to have a discussion, a graduate student and I. Uh-huh. And uh, I said, well, let's take it to the bar. Yeah. I, I own some beer. Yeah. So we went to the bar, mm-hmm. and he and I started to talk yeah. about things we heard on your podcast yeah. and also other things that we started to, to hear. Yeah. And we started to talk heart to heart. Yeah. And, and he, he's white from yeah. California, yeah. and he's trying to be an architect. Yeah. And I asked him why, yeah. and he couldn't answer yeah. Right. <laughs> so, he knew the how, but he didn't know the why. Why? Yeah. Right? Because in these, was he having fun? No. He was he happy? No. 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 Oh, there you are. So he, that's three for three. Yeah. You say in America, three strikes, you're out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Deep inside, he wants to be a chef. Oh my God! Right. There you go. Yeah. So we started to talk, and then we started to invite other people to yeah. join the conversation the following Friday. Yeah. To Really talk. Yeah, yeah. And then this first guy said, we should call this arc talk. Arc talk. <laughs> My God. So architecture talk spreads. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what we started to do every Friday. Okay. And it just grew and grew. Grew and grew? Yeah. We, like how many people? At one point, there was about 50 students and several faculty members discussing on the second floor of this bar. Discussing what? What's wrong with architecture? <laughs> <laughs> or architecture uh, with a small A. I yeah. love it, but it has to be in a bar across the street. street. I think that was part of the success of the AA also, you know, in London mm. during the 19, good old 70s, 80s, 90s. That they had a bar right across the street. Or actually, was it integrated into the school? Oh, But wow, this yeah. idea of the other space yeah. Yeah. is very critical. Yeah. And the biggest rule was that whatever that's set in the bar... Stays in the bar. Bar, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and no hard feeling, right? So that, the, you know, because we got into a lot of very hard discussion. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there are a lot of students whose heart yeah. is in this architecture like, yeah. with AIA. They, they are in this for yeah. AIA. Yeah. And they strongly believe it. And they want to support this yeah. entity. Yeah. And then, then here I come, yeah. and I come from completely different fields, yeah. saying, oh, don't listen to it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and we would have a real discussion. And you know, So that sounds fantastic. So again, you have the utility works happening in 
arch talks now. Right. Yeah. Right. I guess you're right though. I think this I is am. Utility works 2.0. I'm using a storytelling because I'm because I'm forcing everybody to tell stories. Yeah, yeah, you're using the same thing. You're using the sort of a community space to bring together people and liberate them from their, their from own their, trappings. For their yeah. own trappings. Yeah. From their own self caging. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're a Buddhist. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am Buddhist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, then Yeah, so here I am. I've always wanted to come back to Seattle because this is where my eyes were open. Oh, so it's a long journey. Yeah, yeah. You went from here, you went to RISD, yeah. you went to South Carolina, yeah. well, beef back to J- Japan, and then to San Diego, then up to Oregon, they're finally back to Seattle. <laughs> Seattle. It's a circle. Right, right. So I've always wanted to come back here with whatever I learned through okay. this journey. Yeah. So here I am. I think I'm really Arc 200 yeah. in, in my class. Yeah. I'm really just exposing myself. Yeah. And telling them who I am, yeah. how I got here, and yeah. what I do, what I believe. Yeah. Um, and asking them to do the same. Yeah. And, uh, you know, f- designing too. I, I don't even use word floor, walls, roof. Yeah. It's not about that. Yeah. But it's really about us. And how we become human. Yeah. Uh, what it means to be human. What okay. it means to be human. And if without that question, yeah. there's no point in creating a shell for it. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I think students are really responding well to it. Yeah. I think they see the value in it. So the purpose of an architectural education, or really the purpose of architecture, is to answer the question, what it is to be human and how could one live? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or not how, why, or yeah. how, how, how should one, yeah, go on. The, yeah, Bernard Rudofsky, I keep bringing You his keep name bringing because, Bernard yeah. Rudofsky back. Yeah, He's the man who invented black clothes for human beings, yeah. Yeah, and, for and, architects. Yeah. That's his major contribution, <laughs> and it was a disaster. I don't know why he had black, uh, invented the black uniform for us. <laughs> But I think he had some right attitude. He was questioning a lot of things. Yeah. And uh, I think in one of his essays, he said, the art of living is the most important science of all. Mm-hmm. But we decided not to pursue it as mm-hmm. a society. He's talking mainly about American society. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if we get rid of all arts from the, the K through 12 education mm-hmm. as much as they can. Mm-hmm. Every time there's a budget crisis, the first thing to go is art. Yeah. Food. Yeah. Right? We don't really take time to appreciate food anymore. So to me, you can't really talk about teaching architecture without having the art of living simultaneously. Like mm-hmm. if we don't know how to live beautifully, the art and craft and purpose of living. So how to live beautifully and how to live meaningfully. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. And those yeah. Are... So see, I, you know, on my screen, mm-hmm. I have one yellow post-it. There's only one message I tell myself. The first line says, don't sell, but think. So never try and sell anything. Huh. Huh. The second line says, only make beautiful things. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. I think we've forgotten that. Yeah. So the state of California gave me a grant mm. to research about how to rebuild a curriculum, mm-hmm. an art, art and design curriculum mm-hmm. for Cal State. And mm-hmm. uh, they gave me enough money to, for me to travel. Mm-hmm. Uh, and one of the schools I visited was, uh, no, I visited a lot of schools. Mm. And uh, the one of the, the school was at uh, UT Austin. Um, oh. And then I can't remember the professor's name. Well, Frisch Steiner was dean for a long time. Yeah. Well, the funny thing is, I, I emailed a lot of different faculty yeah. all over the country, and yeah. the only people who would reply to my request yeah. to me yeah. are the, the older faculty members. Really? The younger faculty member had no time for me. Really? Yeah. It was funny. And older faculty or the, the faculty already retired. Mm. Um, and my question was, mm. I want to know if you are to start a new school today, yeah. how would you start it? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that well, was my you question. You have to be older to answer that. Yeah, I guess so. 
Yeah. I mean, my colleague Mark and I think about that all the time. Because huh. huh. we, we, we really feel like we must start a new school. Huh. Uh, so, okay. Yeah. So you're here and you're producing a curriculum in the introductory architectural design courses. And you're just saying what? I'm giving them a basic tool yeah. to tell a story, yeah. um, as, as you say. I think that's what I'm doing yeah. uh, now that you mention it. Now, the basic tool meaning paper and pen. Yeah, um, so tell it. a story. Yeah, and then uh, so I'm, I'm asking them, how would you use these to portray whatever you're trying to communicate? I mean, this is uh, so good, you know, because this is different from... You know, this whole process-oriented stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, this, you got to do this, then right. you got to do that, then you got to bring so-and-so, then you got to... It's all based on sort of efficiency and and representation. Right, right. Whereas what you are saying is, how do you tell a story? Right. How do you tell a good story? There's a good friend of mine, uh, Warren Etheridge, who runs How to Make Film kind of courses. Huh, huh, huh. And I think his point is, the point isn't how you make a film, the point is how to tell a story. Mm, mm. And a good story is a story from his perspective, from what I remember, is a story in which somebody is trying to solve something they don't understand. Mm, huh. They're on a, trying to figure something out. Right. Those make the best stories. Right, right. Yeah. So anyway, all right. So this, this is the introductory thing. And we have two architecture programs in our undergraduate. One is the sort of standard, uh, you know, studio-based, mm -hmm. professionally oriented uh, curriculum. But we also have this other thing called architectural studies. And you have a feeling that this could be, currently it's basically a major available to people who didn't get into the design right, thinking. Right, right. And they might do something else, or maybe they apply into a design curriculum at the master's level. Right. But I have a feeling, and, and, and we've talked about this before, that you think that somehow this could be developed into a program which could show the value of a architectural education as a pathway or a, as a framework of thinking mm -hmm. for a number of disciplines and right. professions. Right. Like why and how? So after all these traveling and after all these different things I've tried, what helped me survive and succeed is mm -hmm. what I learned in architecture schools, which is to uh, analyze, articulate, communicate. Right? And, and it gave me this sort of intensity to dig deeper, dig uh -huh. deeper. Yeah. Try to understand. Yeah. It, the architecture education does that to people, I think. Analyze. Articulate, articulate and, explain, yeah. and constantly dig deeper. Right, right. Okay. Right? I think that's... Uh, I'm trying to make a recipe. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's what this architecture education did to me, mm. and I think it does that to a lot of people. Because, yeah. Because I think people who go through architecture schools are very good at researching, uh, developing ideas. And, that, and that, researching and developing ideas about anything. Right, right. And that skill is very valuable in everything, right? And not just in business, but living. Yeah. Go back to happiness issue yeah. or beauty. Yeah. It's not and something fun. you. Yeah. It's not something you can just easily receive. Yeah. You really have to dig deeper and deeper and deeper to find those things. Yeah. And I think architectural education does that. Um, so architectural education, because of its interest and openness and proclivity to research, articulate, communicate and constantly dig deeper and ask questions and be focused on the why rather than the how right. is a training that can start to answer, that can start to teach you how to live and be happy. Right, and live beautifully. And yeah. live beautifully. Right, right. That's what we are doing. That's what we should be doing. Right. Architecture is the art of and learning to live, live beautifully yeah. and happily. Yeah. So if that's the case, the UW's two tracks, you know, the BA in architectural design and architectural studies, mm. the architectural design, fine. Mm -hmm. we of do course, need we, need that. Right? we need that, we need that, yeah. Um, but architectural studies mm -hmm. can really focus on what we just said, right? Yeah. Like art of living beautifully. Well, that's not, yeah, that should be, it's, it should be art of living beautifully. 
which should be a which, major for open or a minor requirement for every student <laughs> on campus. <laughs> um, I am grateful for the skills the architecture school gave me. What skills? The, the articulate. Yeah, 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 right? yeah, of course. So that's what I'm trying to teach students. It's not about how to build buildings, yeah. but it's about becoming an architect with a capital A, right? Yeah. Just like a thinking. Like how Learning about architectural thinking yeah. rather than uh, architecture technique. Right, right. And I think it's a beautiful thing to have a two-track here. Um, you know, I, I grew up in Chandigarh. Mm-hmm. You know, the great modernist right. city designed by Le Corbusier and so on. And when you read Corbusier, and he may be right or wrong in his answers, mm -hmm. but he was always only interested in the art of living. Mm. All his books, yeah. all his articulations, everything he wrote about, and the thing that I received about architecture mm. growing up in Chandigarh, and my father worked with Corbusier, so there was a lot of discussion about this in the house. It was all about how to live. Yeah. Not about uh, building buildings. Building buildings. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that too. I read some of his letters. Yeah, uh, yeah. And little sketches he does. Yeah, he was uh, always describing how to live. About food. Yeah. About music, art. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Everything was part of it. Right. Yeah. And I guess that part is sort of misunderstood. We don't focus on that. The humanness the pursuit of how to become a better human that he was striving yeah. for. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I think that's what we can bring to yeah. the how to how to live better. Yeah. And how to live more now we can allow in sustainability mm -hmm. because how to live more harmoniously with all, everything else mm -hmm. because it's that makes life more happy, fun, beautiful. And may I add, peaceful. Right. We, we really need to find a better way of living. We really need to yeah. find a better way of living. We need to accept that we have a screwed up way of, of living. Now, we may have made very efficient ways of living and very expansive and rich and uh, impressive, but not better. Junichi, this has been an enlightening, eye-opening ear resonating <laughs> mouth watering tactile intellectual and happiness inducing conversation thank you thank you i have so enjoyed it we cannot we have to do more about this yeah, uh, i look forward to that I wish you the best and I look forward to working with you over for many, many years. Yes. Thank yes. you very much. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Architecture Talk. This is your producer, Mary Lee. We hope you enjoyed the conversation, and if you did, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes or Spotify. We would also love to hear from you if you have any suggestions on new topics or guests. You can always reach out to us on our website, Facebook, or Instagram. Thanks again, and until next time, this is Architecture Talk.